What is up YouTube? Tim Layton here and welcome back to my YouTube channel. If you're new here, thank you for coming. It means a lot. Please consider subscribing. Think about it. So today we're going to be going over the biggest mistakes that may be preventing you from saving money. So stay tuned because you may be guilty of these mistakes and you may not realize how much money it is costing you. So let's jump right into it. Alright guys, now first on the list is eating out. Now this can be anything, whether it's fast food, takeout, sit down restaurants, anything that isn't you cooking at your own home. Now this is primarily related to fast food because in my opinion, if you're going to go sit down at a fancy restaurant, when you see that bill, you know how much it hurts your wallet. But fast food's kind of tricky and that's the reason why I'm directing this towards fast food. Because much like high blood pressure, fast food is also the silent killer but to your wallet. These five to $10 meals here and there, they trick you into thinking that it's cheap, into thinking that it's fine. You go, oh, $10, that's fine, I can spend $10. But what you don't realize is that they add up so fast. According to the USDA, a thrifty male between the ages of 19 to 50 can spend $175 a month on food, while a moderate male can spend $320. So if we assume a fast food meal is going to cost you on average about 10 bucks, I think that's a pretty fair estimate. And just for lunch every day, you go out and you get some fast food. That's $310 a month right there. That's almost twice as much as you could be spending on all of your food for the month if you were thrifty. Now also keep in mind that there's plenty of people, maybe some people watching this video, and definitely some people that I know, that almost primarily eat fast food. Every day for lunch at work, they go and pick up some fast food. Then when they get off of work, they swing by McDonald's or whatever, pick up some dinner. That would be $620 a month. And that's not including all the other food that they probably have at their house. Little breakfast snacks, snacks throughout the day, whatever it may be. So there's a trend in this video. And you guys are probably gonna notice it. And that trend is isolating frequent small purchases and expanding on them. Don't look at it as 10 bucks for lunch, 10 bucks for dinner, that's fine. Multiply that by the week, $150 a week, $600 a month, seven, $8,000 a year on fast food, and you quickly get to see how absurd that price is. If I told you that you were spending seven to $8,000 at McDonald's and Chipotle every year, you would probably be disgusted. And a lot of people don't realize that that's what they do, but they just don't do the math to figure that out. Now this is kind of fast food related, but it's kind of not. But we're gonna talk about Starbucks. In case you guys don't know, Starbucks is raising their price two times this year, making a venti drink, like a white mocha, probably about seven bucks, depending on where you're at. And people drink these every day. Now, seven bucks is less than the $10 average for fast food, but the difference is fast food at least gives you sustenance. It provides nutrients, it fills you up. Starbucks, on the other hand, does the opposite. Caffeine is a digestive stimulant, meaning it makes you poop. And once you poop, it makes you hungry. So Starbucks is charging you $7 and then incentivizing you to go buy fast food to fill your stomach up. It's ridiculous. Now, if you have a Starbucks every morning, you have some fast food for lunch and then some fast food for dinner, you're probably spending a thousand dollars a month on this. That is a car payment plus insurance. That could be rent depending on where you live. That is an absurd amount of money. If you're driving a piece of crap car around and you want a new car and you also eat out a lot, by stopping eating out, you could probably afford your new car. Like that is the reality of this situation. Second, on the list is being extra, being flashy, being bougie, whatever you wanna call it, just not living below your means. For instance, I live in a $750 a month apartment. I live here with my girlfriend, we split the rent, that's $375 a month that I pay. Now I know that's not obtainable for people who live in big cities, prices are higher, but you can scale it to match your situation, to match whatever city you live in. For instance, for me, I would say the average apartment's about a thousand bucks a month. A nice apartment, $1,500, and a house, $2,000, $2,500 a month. And I knew people who were making the same amount of money as me 
who had a house, who were paying $2,000, $2,500 a month to live there. And they didn't need it. They don't have kids. They don't have a huge family. They just wanted it. So I'm saving $1,500 a month, $2,000 a month, more than they are. Another example, my newest car that I own is a 2004. Okay, I really want a new car. I would love a new car. Don't get me wrong, but I will not buy one right now. When I get my money right, when I have a plethora of money, more than I need, I will buy a new car, hopefully in cash. But for the time being, I don't want to make myself broke driving around something that I don't need. Another example, I got the iPhone 12. I'm not getting the iPhone 13. I probably won't get the iPhone 14. I don't even know if I'll get the iPhone 15. I'm keeping this phone as long as humanly possible. And I get that we live in a time with Instagram and Facebook, social media, that you feel like you have to be flashy. You feel like you have to show off to people and show how well you're doing. I get that. I feel that desire. But what you need to understand is that if you're young, if you're 18, 19, if you're in your 20s, even 30s, you still have plenty of time to live the life that you see on Instagram, the life that you desire. But if you live below your means now, it will pay off in the long run. The people who are living their flashy lives now on Instagram and Facebook, more than likely they're broke, living paycheck to paycheck to have their nice car and their nice house. If you live in a cheap apartment now, you can put a massive down payment on your dream house in 5-10 years. Your mortgage will be half of what theirs is. You can buy your nice flashy car in cash, have no car payment. You'll be living super comfortably the life that you desire while they're living paycheck to paycheck with the life that they desire. You'll be in such a better spot and I can't stress that enough. It is so important to ignore social media, ignore the social pressures to be flashy and bougie right now and do you. Focus on yourself, save money, invest your money and it will pay off in the long run. All right, now the last thing that could be ruining your savings and really holding you back and I can say this because I just recently looked at this and I didn't realize how bad I was about it, is look at your bank statement over the last 30 days. Look at your bills, look at your subscriptions. When I did this, I found that I was paying for a subscription to HBO Max and Paramount Plus that I thought I canceled. That's 25 bucks a month I saved by looking at my bank statement and canceling them. And I was still paying full coverage insurance on my motorcycle that I can't ride for the next three, four months because it's winter. That saved me 50 bucks a month. I was paying an extra five bucks a month for an Xbox Game Pass that gives you access to games for free, but I wasn't using a single one of those games. I wasn't playing any of them. So that saved me five bucks a month. I looked at my phone bill and noticed that I was paying for Verizon Cloud, which I don't use. I have Apple Cloud and Google Cloud. That was five bucks a month. And then I was also paying 10 bucks a month for phone insurance that I've never used. So I came to the realization that if I break my phone, I will buy a new phone. And I canceled that and saved me another 10 bucks a month. And finally, I saved 20 bucks a month by looking at the insurance on my 1998 Chevy Silverado that's worth like $3,000. And I had all these fancy extras that I didn't need because that truck is pretty much worthless. So I highly advise you look at your subscriptions, cancel anything you don't use, look at your bills, see what you can knock off, any extra premium features that you don't need or you don't use at all, and look at your insurances. Now I'm not advising that you go cheap on your insurance. If you think you're going to crash or if you really want to be covered, if you do crash, don't lower your insurance. But if there's anything that's completely unnecessary, cut it down. And I almost guarantee you that at a minimum, you could save 20 to 30 bucks a month right there. I saved, I think, $120 a month by looking at my bills. Now, because I feel so strongly about it, because I did it and saved myself a bunch of money, I'm going to make a video in the future just solely based on cutting down your subscriptions and bills. There's apps that track that sort of thing, and I'll put that in the video. But for now, I'm just going to tell you guys to look over your bank statements however you want to do it, whether it's with an app or if you just get on your phone and look at your banking app and check your statement, however you want to do it. Just look through it the last month and see what's come out.
I'm pretty sure that you're going to find things that you had no idea you were paying for. All right, guys, I do think that's going to do it for this video. I really hope you enjoyed it. I hope maybe I opened your eyes to a couple things that you might have been doing, you might have been guilty of, and maybe you can fix that and save yourself a couple bucks. Because it really does come down to penny pinching. Just cut out the excess, cut out whatever you can, and it adds up, and you'll see a major difference. So thank you guys for watching. If you liked this video, please give it a like. Please consider subscribing, and I'll see you guys tomorrow.